puts in boots put in boots Gustav Daw from the fell book by Miss Mullock illustrations by Gustav Daw Emila dying divided all his property property between his three children. This was a very simple matter as he had nothing to leave but his meal, his ass and his cat. So he made no will and called in no lawyer who would probably have taken a large uh, slice of slice out of these poor professions. The eldest son took the milk, the second the ass, while the third was off black to contain himself with the cat, at which he grumbled, uh, grumbled very much. My brothers, said he, by putting their property together, making an honest uh, livelihood. But there is nothing left for me except to die for hunger, unless, indeed, I were to kill my cat and eat him, and take a coat out of his skin, which would be very scanty clothing. Uh, clothing. The cat, who heard the young man talking to himself, sat up on his four paws, and looking at him with a grave and wise air, said, Master, I think you had better not kill me. I shall be much more useful to your life. How so? asked his master. You have but to give me a sack and a pair of boots such as gentlemen wear when they go shooting, and you will find you are not so ill off as you suppose. Now, though the young miller did not much depend upon the cat's words, still he thought it rather surprising that a cat should speak at all, and he had before now seen him show so much adroitness and cleverness in catching rats and mice. That it seemed advised Bill to trust him a little farther, especially as poor young fellow, he had nobody else to trust. When the cat got his boots, he drew them on with a grand air and sli sl uh, slinging his sack over his shoulder and drawing the cords of it round his neck. He marched bravely to rapid Warren hard by, with which he was uh, sorry, with which he was well acquainted. Then putting some brand and lettuce into his bag, and stretching himself out beside it as if he were dead. He waited till some fine fat young rabbit ignorant of the wickedness and the state of the world, should peer into the sack to eat the food that was inside. This happened every shortly, I'm sorry, this happened very shortly, for there are plenty of foolish young rabbits in every warrant. And when one of them who really was a splendid fat fellow. Put his head inside. Master Puss draw the cause in deadly and took him and killed, uh, killed him without mercy. Then, very proud of his prey, he marched direct off to the Paris and begged to speak with the king. He was desired to ascend to the apartments of his majesty, where making a low, uh, making a low bow, he said, Sir, he is a magnificent rabbit, killed in the warren which belongs to my lord, the Marquis of Carabas.
and which he has desired me to offer humbly to your majesty. Tell your master, uh, tell your master, replied the king politely, that I accept his present and I am very much ob obliged to him. Another time, Post went and hid himself and his sack in a wheat field, and there caught two splendid fat porridges in the same manner as he had done the rabbit. When he presented them to the king, I'm sorry, when he presented them to the king with a similar message as before, His Majesty was so pleased that he ordered the cat to be taken down into the kitchen and given something to eat and drink, where while enjoying himself, that faithful animal did not crease, did not kiss, cease. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what to read this word. Uh, to talk in the most cunning way of the large preserves and abundant game which belonged to my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. One day, hearing that the king was intending to take a drive along the riverside with his daughters, the most beautiful princess in the world, Puss says to his master, Sir, if you will only follow my advice, your fortune is made. Be it so, said the miller's son, who was growing very disconsolate and cared little what he did. Say you say, cat. It is but little, replied Puss, looking wise as cats can. You have only to go and bathe in the river at a Place which I shall show you, and leave all the rest of me and rest to me. Only remember that you are no longer yourself, but my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. Just so, said the miller's son. It's not the same to me, but he did as the cat told him. While he was bathing, the king and all the court passed by and were started to hear loud cries of, Help! Help! My lord, the Marquis of Calabas is drowning. The king put his head out of the carriage and saw nobody but the cat, who had, at different times, brought him so many presents of game. However, he ordered his guards so to fly quickly to the saxer of my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. While they were pulling the unfortunate Marquis off of the water, the cat came up, bowing to the sides of the king's carriage, and told a long and pitiful story about some thieves who, while his master was bathing, had come and carried away all his clothes, so that it would be impossible for him to appear before his majesty and the illustrious princess. Oh, we will so remedy that, answered the king kindly, and immediately ordered one of the first officers to uh, of the household to ride back to the Paris with all speed and bring back the most elegant surprise of course for the young gentleman who kept in the background until they arrived then to be handsome and well made his new clothes became him so well that he looked as if he had been a marquis all his days and advanced with an air of respectful ease to offer his thanks to his majesty. The king received him cautiously, and the princess admired him very much. Indeed, so charming did he appear to her, that she hinted to her father to invite him 
into the carriage with them, which you may be sure the young man did not refuse. The cat, delighted at the success of his scheme, went away as fast as he could and ran so terrifically that he kept a long way ahead of the royal carriage. He went on and on till he came to some peasants who were mowing in a meadow. Good people, said he in a very firm voice. The king is coming past here, surely, and if you do not say that, the field you are mowing belong to my lord, the Marquis of Calabas. You shall all be chopped as small as my meat. So when the king drove by and asked whose meadow it was, where there was such a splendid cough of he, the mower's on answer, trembling that it belonged to my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. You have very fine land, Marquis, said His Majesty to the miller's son, who bowed and answered that it was not a bad matter to take it all together. Then the cat came to a wheat field where the ripples were ripping with all their might. He bowed in, I'm sorry, he bowed it in upon them. The king is coming past today, and if you do not tell him that this beef belongs to my lord, the Marquis of Carabas, I will have you every one chop as small as minced meat. The reaper were much alarmed, this as they were beat, and the king congratulated the Marquis upon possessing such beautiful fields let it be such an abundant harvest. They dove on, the cat always running before and saying the same thing to everybody he met, that they were to declare the whole country belonged to his master, so that even the king was astonished at the west estates of my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. But now the cat arrived at Great Castle, where drill and oak, to whom belong all the land through which the loyal equipage had been driving. He was a cruel, cool, uh, he was a cruel cool tyrant, and his tenants and servants were terribly afraid of him, which accounted for their being so ready to say whatever they were told to say by the cat who had taken pains to inform himself of all about the oak. So, putting on the bodice face, he could assume, push much up to the castle with his boots on, and asked to see the owner of it, saying that he was on his travels, but did not wish to pass so near the castle of such a noble gentleman without paying his respects to him. When the elk heard his message, he went to the door and received the cat as silvery as an oak can and begged him to walk in and repose, and repose himself. Thank you, sirs, said the cat. But first, I hope you will satisfy a traveler's curiosity. I have heard in far countries of your many remarkable qualities, and especially how you have the power to change yourself into any source of beast your choice, uh, your choose, a lion, for instance, or an elephant. That is quite true, replied the oak. At least you should doubt it. I will immediately become a lion. He did so, and the cat was frightened that he sprang up to the roof of the castle and hid himself in the gutter, a proceeding rather inconvenient on account of his boots, which were not exactly fitted to walk with upon towels. At length, perceiving that the earth had 
resumed his original form, he came down again, still thoroughly, and confessed that he had been very much frightened. But, sir, said he, it may be easy enough for such a big gentleman as you to change himself into a large animal. I do not suppose you can become a small one and rest a mouse, for instance. I have heard that you can't steal for my part. I consider it's quite impossible. Impossible? cries the other indignantly. You shall see, and immediately the cat saw the earth no longer but the little mouse running along on the floor. This was exactly what he wanted, and he did the very best a cat could do, and the most natural under the circumstances. He sprang upon the mouse and gobbled it up in a trice, so there was an end of the earth. By this time, the king had arrived opposite the castle and was seized with a strong desire to enter it. The cat, hearing the noise of the carriage wheels, ran forward in a great hurry and, standing at the gate, said in a loud voice, Welcome, sir, to the castle of my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. What? cried his majesty, very much surprised. Does the castle also belong to you? To re Marquis, you have kept your secrets well up to the last minute. I have never seen anything finer than this courtyard and these battlements. Indeed, I have nothing like them in the hall on my dominions. The Marquis, without speaking, offered his hand to the princess to assess her to descend, and standing aside that the king might enter first, for he had already acquired all the manners of a court, followed his majesty to the great hall, where a magnificent collation was laid out, and where, without more delay, they all sat down to feast. Before the banquet was over, the king, charmed with the good qualities of the Magpies of Car Carabas, and likewise with his wine, of which he had drunk six or, so, uh, or seven cups, said, bowing across the table at which the princess and the mirror's son were talking very really confidentially together. It rests with you, Marquis, whether you will not become my son-in-law. I shall be only too happy, said the com complacent Marquis, and the princess cast down eyes declared the same. So they were married the very next day and took a uh, procession of the earth's castle, and of everything that had belonged to him, as for the cat, he became at once a grand personage, and had never more any need to run after mice except for his own diversion. Okay, you may notice that I have problem with reading along both vocabulary and the characters in here. <laughs> I try to make the voice different but it's end up like I mix up because I I don't know which which uh, sentence is belong to the cat or the king <laughs> well I heard about this story for a while in the United States but never seen and never read it until now it is quite fun the cat is very smart to save himself and to make the big orc like he can change to another form of uh, characters, another form of the figure like lion and then he lose because of the cat. Okay.
Thank you.